Shepard Grafoni. He's been seated additional time from Elsa Martinez and Don Dwellis Thompson, Jared Jones, and Paul Harper for a total of 10 minutes. <clears throat> Thank you, Commissioner. I'm sorry. He'll be followed by Ray Mundy. I'm sorry. Please go ahead. No problem. Thank you, Commissioners. Uh, I'm going to try and be brief. I know uh, many uh, individuals have made some great comments so far. Um, <clears throat> first off, I just wanted to give you an update from our uh, petition. As of uh, last meeting, there was about 720 or 721 signatures. That's up to 851 as of uh, last night or this morning. But uh, I think the important thing here we need to realize, I'm going to talk about the, what's happened in other counties because I think that's uh, significant. But before I get there, um, the difference in the arguments that you're, you've heard and you're going to hear uh, through the remainder of the uh, item here today uh, is, is stark. And it's because they're based on two different worldviews. Uh, those in favor of regulation and government protectionism in this case, they try to present a world of, of fear and darkness and danger. And those and resistance to change, and those in favor of deregulation, see a world or envision a world where entrepreneurs can flourish, where the free market regulates good businesses to hire strata and bad businesses out of business, and protects the consumer, offer lower prices, better quality service. Um, the issue has kind of been demonized a little bit in the in the media, and we really need to not decide this issue based on who's created the largest monster because it's not about fear it's not about an unknown danger uh, that's uh, unfortunately how government tends to, big government tends to operate sometimes we have to remember that this isn't specifically about uber either uh, though uber is a, a 40 over 40 billion dollar company that operates in 54 countries across the world um, to exempt uber from this ordinance after hearing some of the people at the last meeting, who are going to be speaking today, tell you that they should be throwing Uber drivers in jail uh, really highlights the reason why government shouldn't be picking winners and losers, because you're operating on bad information, old information uh, all the time. So rather than hear a couple Uber drivers speak to you this morning, they could be sitting in jail, their car could be impounded with fines that they can't pay, they could have no jobs, they could have less money to put food on the table, et cetera. Uh, I'm glad that at least some people uh, who are against uh, Uber at the last meeting now think Uber is okay to keep out of this uh, ordinance, but the reality is we need to deregulate the entire industry. We need to keep, we need to, uh, we, there's constitutional concerns there, uh, as uh, Commissioner Hiller mentioned earlier as well. By granting a special privilege to one company, you're therefore denying it to another. Uh, we really shouldn't forget that there are many traditional taxi companies who are embracing deregulation and embracing this new type of technology. I know if uh, I was uh, a taxi owner, I mean, I, I would be glad that this is happening. It would give me the opportunity to do so much more to grow my business. Uh, advertise how much insurance you have, that you have more insurance than Uber, if that's the case. Conduct more frequent background checks. I would print out a background check of every single one of my drivers and paste it on the passenger side rear window of every single vehicle that I operated. So before someone gets in my car, they know who's driving them, they know when the background check was conducted, and they know that the quality of the driver is up to their standards. The tourism industry, um, I can understand there may be some trepidation there and their feelings, but the reality is, again, don't recommend companies that you don't feel comfortable with through your concierge. If you feel that uh, you want background checks, you could conduct them yourself or have an agreement with every company that you uh, recommend to your guests that they pr provide proof of insurance and uh, quality background checks. Again, you know, big government bureaucrat will say we need government to do that, but the reality is we don't. Uh, drunk driving fatalities, that was mentioned as well. Uh, Temple University study I mentioned at uh, the last meeting, 5.6% reduction in uh, alcohol-induced road fatalities in California cities where Uber operates. Uh, from that study, I just want to quote briefly, with more than 13,000 deaths occurring nationally each year due to alcohol-related car crashes at a cost of $37 billion, results indicate that a complete implementation of UberX would create a public welfare net of over $1.3 billion to American taxpayers and save roughly 500 lives. Deregulation should be the rallying cry of those who are trying to make this argument about public safety. 
Collier County is not in the wilderness on this issue either. Gainesville, Florida deregulated. Uh, they voted six to zero. They no longer require city-issued uh, permits uh, for their drivers. Gainesville police chief was quoted in the news as saying he's satisfied with the change. And, uh, and an interesting aside, they also have a pilot program in place that helps connect Uber with senior citizens in the community who may not be familiar with the technology or the, the safety and, and the convenience and the lower cost. Melbourne, Florida deregulated on November 12th, so they followed in your footsteps. Um, Los Angeles Times mentioned Collier County on November 19th. Uh, it was all actually in many online publications as well as traditional publications. I'm going to quote briefly. Policymakers across the nation could learn from their peers in Florida who may have found a way to level the playing field and still make way for innovation. Collier County joins the cities of Sarasota and Gainesville in completely deregulating vehicle for hire services, putting taxis and ride sharing companies on equal footing. Now others, including Miami-Dade, Portland, Oregon, Cambridge, Mass, are considering similar changes. And actually, just a few days ago, Portland, Oregon uh, did open the market up to Uber and Lyft. So, but what do, what do we know is going to happen after or post deregulation? We can see that in Sarasota. Uh, Sarasota voted to deregulate in September, and they've actually gone ahead uh, with it and finalized it. So it's really interesting. There was an article. Uh, online uh, Herald uh, Tribune, I believe, uh, and it was sent to the commission as well. Uh, Sarasota spokeswoman uh, Jan Thornburg was quoted as saying, if trouble is coming and hasn't happened yet, the city has not received a single passenger complaint about taxi services, end quote. So this is post-deregulation. And that mirrors what the county attorney had put in the executive summary on October 27th, that no one in Collier County has complained about Uber either. But what about these traditional taxi companies? How are they coping with this? The reality is uh, Sunset Taxi in Sarasota, the owner stated that uh, even though the city doesn't require a permit, he still keeps his old hack license um, up in the window so anybody can see it and know that they did perform those standards and they still keep up to those standards. Uh, John Nicholas, the Yellow Cab Company's head of operations, uh, stated Yellow Cab has also not cut back on its insurance or switched any of its internal policies because of deregulation. Doing so would be unwise. Clearly so. So I think this really uh, sets up an open challenge to companies in Collier County. Uh, are you going to stop your insurance? Are you going to stop conducting background checks on your drivers? I think the answer, if you want to stay in business, is no. So the, the consumer, the citizen, the tourist, the visitor in Collier County is going to be protected not only by market-based regulation, but importantly, business reg reputation. You're not going to get a ride from someone who just shows up on the side of the street unless you choose to do so. But that's going to be extremely rare when there is a, a ton of Uber drivers, a ton of great taxi companies in Collier County that are still meeting safety standards. So I encourage you to continue in your uh, quest to deregulate. Uh, please vote uh, and stand firm in your convictions from October 27th. Thank you. Your next speaker.